Imagine a reality where the most feared theropod that ever evolved in our prehistory faces off against the ultimate hybrid created by human ingenuity. In one corner stands the real world Tyrannosaurus Rex, whose presence alone would have stricken fear in any creature that faced it during the Cretaceous period. In the other corner we have the Indominus Rex, a laboratory engineered monstrosity originating from the movie Jurassic World. This was a combination of the deadliest traits of multiple species to become a predator that would give the parents nightmares. Now this is an intriguing debate that I briefly touched upon in my Indominus Rex in the Mesozoic video. However, that video left it a bit open, and it didn't feature a peak Tyrannosaurus Rex, which, let's face it, a prime, peak, best Tyrannosaurus Rex would be essential to face such a hybrid. Today, we'll take the Indominus Rex out of its fictional environment and thrust it into a real-world scenario for a grounded analysis. So, who will win? The strongest theropod in real history or the strongest hybrid of fiction? Alright, technically strongest official Jurassic franchise hybrid. Before you find out, don't forget to like and subscribe so I don't go extinct like either of these two iconic creatures. Without further introduction, let us get into the debate. When it comes to size, the Tyrannosaurus Rex and Indominus Rex are relatively comparable in length, but differ significantly in weight and build. The Tyrannosaurus Rex, the largest terrestrial predator known to us, was a chunky dinosaur. Using a combination of the largest known specimens such as E.D. Cope, the real T-Rex would have been around 13.13 meters or 43 feet long and approximately 4.5 meters or 15 feet tall at the hips. However, the T-Rex had a much greater mass to back up its size, weighing up to 11.7 tons. Its immense weight contributed significantly to its durability and strength, establishing it as the unchallenged predator of its environment. With this size, it was able to endure and recover from severe physical trauma. Evidence of this can be seen in specimens like Stan, a T-Rex of smaller proportions that showed signs of surviving critical injuries along its neck. More specifically, a fused neck vertebra likely stemming from combat with other T-Rex individuals. When we get into just how powerful a T-Rex bite could have been, then you'll see why this feat of survival is no joke. Also, the fact that they would have been strong enough to pull a Triceratops' head from its body just shows off again how strong and powerful this predator truly was. In comparison, the Indominus Rex, though fictional, is, well, a bit annoying to measure up due to a number of different statements. Its subadult size can seemingly be estimated to be around equally long at around 13 meters or 42 feet, but a taller 5.5 meters or 18 feet. It also seems to clock in at around 6 to 8 tons at its more conservative and accurate weights. Hypothetical adult Indominus specimens could reach staggering dimensions of 16.9 meters or 55.4 feet in length, 6.7 meters or 22 feet in height, and a weight of approximately 10 tons. It was able to sustain gunfire, an ankylosaur club to the skull, velociraptor bites, and of course, Rex's his own bites, which could reach approximately 34,000 newtons. Seemingly, the Indominus Rex even went using its larger estimates, was still quite a bit lighter than the T-Rex, having a more streamlined body built for speed and agility. Talking about speed and agility, those are two areas where these two differ notably. As you can imagine, moving dinosaurs are granted the ability to move with speed and grace, while the real world is hindered quite a bit by their actual weight. The real Tyrannosaurus Rex was not capable of running in the conventional sense. However, studies from researchers like William Sellers suggest that it could have reached speeds of around 19 kilometers an hour or 12 miles per hour. This was completed through a powerful speed walk rather than a true sprint. However, there are debates of this being a vast underestimation of their speeds. We'll just stick to these numbers. Despite its limited top speed, T-Rex compensated with its remarkable agility. According to research led by Eric Snively, T-Rex could execute rapid turns and quick movements at approximately twice the rates of theropods of similar sizes, such as Giganotosaurus. This agility would enable it to effectively engage opponents in close quarter combat, allowing it to get the first hit in. In contrast, the Indominus Rex was designed to excel in practically everything, which includes both speed and agility. This hybrid was able to reach speeds of up to 48 kilometers an hour or 30 miles per hour, allowing it to sprint at speeds unmatched by similarly sized creatures. She was also notably agile, likely thanks to the Velociraptor DNA. This allowed her to reach around and take out the far smaller and more agile Raptor squad, as well as outmaneuver Rexy. Its superior speed and agility gave it a decisive edge in pursuit, enabling it to close close distances rapidly and easily outpace most prey. It does seem that it would be far superior in terms of speed and probably a bit more agile than the real T-Rex. However, you can't count out the real deal just yet. Tyrannosaurus Rex truly shines as a formidable natural predator when it comes to weaponry. Possessing the most powerful bite of any known terrestrial predator, the T-Rex was capable of crushing bone and inflicting catastrophic damage. 
Using ED Cope as a baseline for its capabilities, the T-Rex likely had an even stronger bite force than previously recorded due to us utilizing the largest wrecks available. A 2021 study by Andre J. Rowe and Eric Snively placed a T-Rex known as AMNH 5027, which is estimated around 8 tons in weight, with a bite force of 61,500 newtons. On top of this, a 2023 study led by Evan Johnson Ransom placed our ever-beloved Sue at around 63,000 newtons. Bear in mind, Sue is often placed around the 9-ton range. Range. So it only makes sense to presume that our peak Tyrannosaur, which is around three tons heavier than both of them, would have a far stronger bite force. This could potentially mean that our peak Tyrannosaur could have been putting out bite forces above 70,000 newtons. Furthermore, the T-Rex's skull has been observed by infamous paleontologist Jack Horner to have signs of pachyostosis, a condition that increased its skull density similar to the famous Pachycephalosaurus. This thickened skull structure provided additional support for ramming attacks, enabling T-Rex to deliver devastating headbutts when necessary. On the other hand, the Indominus Rex combines a variety of offensive adaptations from its unique genetic makeup. With a jaw that could open far above a 90 degree angle, it could deliver a serious bite, although that doesn't mean it would rival the T-Rex in this regard. We know this as Jurassic Park's Rexy has a bite force of approximately 34,000 newtons. Meanwhile, it is directly noted that Rexy's bite force is far above the Indominus, most likely due to the fact that it had such a mixture of different creatures that it reduced the bite force that the Tyrannosaur would have provided. We might not know the specific bite force, but I think it's safe to say that we can put her around 30,000 newtons. However, the Indominus Rex certainly outperforms the real Rex when it comes to limb use, being that it had elongated muscular arms that was easily capable of piercing through the durable glass of the gyrosphere as well as Rexy. Although this doesn't mean that her arms allows her just to one-shot everything. It was clearly seen when she had a massive wind-up and then slapped Blue into a war. This did not severely damage the Raptor. She came back up a few minutes later and helped Rexy to beat her. Also, so we see in Fallen Kingdom that the supposed bulletproof gyrosphere was pierced by a low caliber firearm, so hence that does put the power of her arms into question. Yet, even if we do underestimate its claws, the Indominus Rex would still possess enough strength to tear through the flesh of most creatures. One of its most unique traits includes its camouflage ability, which was derived from cuttlefish DNA. This allowed it to blend into its surroundings and ambush unsuspecting prey. Additionally, it could regulate its body temperature thanks to tree frog DNA. But as cool as these abilities are, I personally do not think that they would actually be that useful when it comes to this face-to-face -face conflict, mainly because, as stated, it's face-to-face. -face. And changing body temperature isn't going to help too well against a T-Rex. Maybe if she was fighting a predator or something, sure, but not so much here. Now, in terms of intelligence and senses, both the Irex and the T-Rex have their strengths and weaknesses. The T-Rex's cognitive abilities likely fell somewhere between crocodiles and primates, based on studies by Susanna Hazel and reviews by Casper et al. For this matchup, I think I'll give the T-Rex the benefit of the doubt, leaning to towards the higher end of the intelligence spectrum. Where we're more confident in is its exceptional senses. Research by Graham Hughes in 2019 revealed that T-Rex had an olfactory sense comparable to that of a turkey vulture, which are capable of detecting scents from over a kilometer away. And contrary to its portrayal in Jurassic Park, its vision was a big strength. According to Stevens' 2006 study, T-Rex had sharp eyesight being able to spot prey from over six kilometers away, being on par if not better than modern hawks. The Indominus Rex, however, was genetically engineered need for advanced cognitive function, which enabled it to solve problems, remember patterns, and even recognize and remove its tracking device. Its ability to outsmart human handlers specifically trained for dealing with dinosaurs was a defining trait, making it far more intelligent and unpredictable than the real world T-Rex. It is approximately the same level, if not above the intelligence of the Jurassic Raptors, which Dr. Grant argued was smarter than apes and dolphins, so clearly putting it above the T-Rex. Overall, I think it's fine to assume that its vision and smell would have been just fine, but we can't really say it was amazing. It also had the ability to detect thermal signatures, which was also a neat trick. Its real advantage doesn't really come from its senses, but its heightened intelligence, allowing it to anticipate potential threats, as well as adapting mid-conflict, as we saw against Rexy when she changed her strategy from using her jaws to her arms, allowing it to pin and defeat the theropod. But when it comes to experience, the real world T-Rex easily has the advantage, having evolved and thrived in a challenging ecosystem with formidable prey, rather than being locked in an enclosure for most of its life. 
I'm sure most of us know this, but Tyrannosaurus Rex hunted some of the most heavily armored herbivores to ever evolve. This of course included Ankylosaurus, which weighed approximately 5 tons and was armored with a club tail that could do some serious damage. More specifically, it was able to strike at a force of approximately 25,000 newtons, which would have definitely shattered some bones. There was also the Edmontosaurus, which at its heaviest not only rivaled the T-Rex in weight, but could even exceed its highest estimates by 3 tons. And to be honest, the group of hadrosaurs often get severely underrated in terms of combat, but with their weight alone, they were capable of defending themselves against the T-Rex with brute force. Additionally, Tyrannosaurus Rex preyed upon the classic Triceratops, everyone's favorite three-horned herbivore. This Ceratopsian could have weighed up to 10 tons, and of course those horns would have easily been able to deliver some fatal injuries to a Rex. There is even speculation that T-Rex may have even hunted upon sauropods like Alamosaurus, which weighed well over 30 tons. Now this is highly speculative, but due to the fact that there is a good chance that Alamosaurus did overlap with T-Rex, I think it's fair that at least one Tyrannosaur out there would have messed with one. Tyrannosaurs are also known not to have been shy when it came to engaging in conflicts with each other. This is viewed on multiple remains of T-Rexes where it's evident that there is healing scarring present. This is evident by a study led by Caleb Brown which discussed intraspecific combat throughout the Tyrannosaur family, being cited as a common occurrence. And we also have the previously mentioned Stan, which healed being bitten on the neck by another Tyrannosaur. Now, if we take into account the fact that they may have had a 60,000 newton bite and it survived, well then, I think this shows just how tough they truly were. The Indominus Rex, on the other hand, lacked this kind of evolutionary experience, having been created in a controlled environment rather than evolving in the wild. It was isolated and lacked real-world hunting experience against equally matched opponents. Well, that was of course until it broke out. It was here where its sheer aggression, strength, natural instincts, and intelligence allowed it to take down a variety of creatures on Isla Nublar. This included an Ankylosaurus, a herd of Apatosaurs, and a Brachiosaurus. She even managed to take on and defeat the Raptor Squad and Ingens Rexy in their first round of conflict. In her short time of being set free, the Indom did acquire a surprising amount of experience that certainly would be proven useful when facing another T-Rex. Alright, so we've gone through each contestant, so who would actually win an encounter between these two apexes, the Tyrant Lizard King or the Untamable Queen? Well, I think this fight is actually closer than most people give it credit for, but if we had to give categories to each, the real Tyrannosaurus Rex would likely take weight, bite force, bite effectiveness, endurance, senses, battle intelligence, and experience. Meanwhile, the Indominus Rex would take length, height, durability, speed, agility, stamina, weaponry, abilities, and intelligence. In a battle between these two behemoths, I believe the winner hinges heavily on which version of the Indominus Rex we're considering. Against the more conservative 6-ton estimates of the hybrid, the Tyrannosaurus Rex with its massive bite force, combat experience, in combination with weighing twice as much, has a good chance of winning. Rex's 34,000 newton bite was dealing damage to the Indominus Rex. The same Rex is logically not having the correctly shaped teeth to deliver crushing bites. The real Rex has doubled that bite force with the correctly shaped teeth for a devastating bite. Also, the fact that it would have taken down some of the most dangerous herbivores as well as other similarly sized Rexes on a consistent basis makes it experienced and battle hardened. In this scenario, I think the Indom would be the aggressor, where the two would rush at each other with the Rex ramming it back with its mass. It would then sustain a few slashes and bites from the Indominus Rex. Being a bit shorter in height, it would have the open opportunity to destroy the hybrid's arms, which as seen in the battle against Rexy, was the game changer. With the arms eliminated, I think it would just take a one good place bite around the neck to end the battle. Hence, I think against an Indominus Rex around the weight of 6-7 to seven tons, the real Rex would win at a mid-difficulty. However, against an 8-9 to nine ton Indominus Rex, I think that's where the battle becomes a 50-50. The accurate Rex would still have a significant weight advantage, however, it would be slightly more difficult to shove this hybrid around. Bear in mind this hybrid is still faster and more agile, but now with just more weight behind its blows. And I think that this is where the T-Rex will struggle. With this conflict, I think it entirely depends on how the Indominus Rex plays it. This is because she needs to end the battle quickly. If it's able to utilize its claws to quickly subdue the real Rex and put it to the ground before ending it with a bite to the neck, then I think that that's where it wins. However, the longer the conflict goes for, the greater the odds goes for the Rex, as all it needs is one solid bite and the battle is over. However, when 
considering the hypothetical full-grown adult Irex reaching a massive 16.9 meters in length, 6.7 meters at the head, and 10 tons in weight, it becomes an entirely different story. The hybrid's sheer size, agility, and adaptability, paired with its devastating arsenal of weaponry and intelligence, makes it too much to handle, even for the largest of T-Rexes. This version of the Indominus Rex essentially combines the best traits of various predators, making it a juggernaut capable of taking down the most formidable opponents. It would be too heavy and too tall for the T-Rex to get the upper hand. Plus, it's just common sense that a hypothetical adult would be even stronger and more durable than what we saw in Jurassic World, giving the Indominus Rex the victory at a low to mid difficulty. Overall, when we take the battle into reality, it becomes a lot closer than people give it credit for. The various sizes of the Indominus Rex is what is truly a decisive changer in the tide of this conflict. But with that, we've reached the end of the video and I hope you'll enjoy. Make sure to comment down below whether you agree or disagree with the verdict and why. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you on the next video. See ya.